So we're doing a study through the book of James. We're going through it verse by verse. And today we're going to look at James chapter 1, verses 19 to 21. If you want to catch, uh, of course, uh, previous um, uh, episodes and go through previous verses to get what we've been saying so far, of course, you can do that. But let's read these verses. James 1, 19 to 21. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Mm. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Mm. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God requires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in in you mm. which can save you mm. Mm. now let's begin with the opening statement of james here uh, my dear brothers and sisters by my reckoning this is the third time mm. that james has referred to his readers <clears throat> as brothers and sisters and that is significant don't yeah. you think what does yeah. this tell us about James and his motivation for writing Ben. Well, I think he's firstly he's, he shows how much he cares about the people he's you know he's got this heart mm. to he's not telling them what to do he's got a heart to be like guys I've got some some things that are going to help you in your mm. life so take note of this which is literally his next sentence yeah. um, but I think as well it's got this kind of um, yeah, it's like it's like it's like listen, listen in, listen in. I've got something to help you, yeah. and uh, yeah, it just gives that really pastoral heart, doesn't it? And he's t- he's trying to comfort them at the same time and say we're in this together. Like it's not mm. like me telling you you're my students. It's like brothers and sisters. We're in this together. Um, but yeah, really take note of this. I think this is very very important what you say because effectively, and it's again, it's mm. always important to remember. That when James is writing, he is writing to a church, yeah. much like much of the Apostle Paul's letters and much like much of what Peter wrote as well in the New Testament. I think this really challenges, um, and it may sound a little negative for me to say it like this, but I think it challenges um, the individualism that is very prevalent yeah. in century 21 mm, yeah. Yeah. when it's me, my relationship with God, me, yeah. I can serve mm. God my own way, I can do my own thing. That one statement there in James 1.19, my brothers and sisters, and on the back of what Ben has just said, um, there is a sense in which um, this does not work Mm. unless we're doing it together. And that is, for me, a very, very important um, message that comes across from James. Don't you Mm. think, SJ? Yeah, it shows his selflessness. It shows he's not got the worldly views where you know focus about yourself you're being selfish you, you only care about yourself but actually focus like he cares for everyone you know that's why he dresses mm-hmm. them as my dear brothers and sisters you know he just wants the best for them yeah. he's given uh, for me it's, it's like he's giving this brother, elderly brotherly advice because he, he knows from his own mm-hmm. experiences and of his life you know what he's been through and he's just giving this advice to these people you know encouraging them and like getting advising them what they should be doing mm. and what's interesting is that he doesn't address them as my sons and daughters yeah. though he yeah. was clearly a father mm. in the faith yeah but he addresses them as brothers and sisters which again fits into the sort of the equality vibe of mm. james's message that nobody's better than anybody else rich yeah. are not better than poor yeah, yeah. You know, wealthy are not better than anybody else. We are one in Christ. That is very, very significant. Now, on the back of his brothers and sisters comment, he then proceeds to give some advice. And I'd like you to comment on this, Dr. John, verse 19. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And we might as well do with verse 20 as well, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God requires. What what lies behind this? Before we even comment on what he's saying, what lies behind mm. why James actually encourages this and gives this advice? I think in the situations they're in with uh, the trials, persecution, whatever, it's easy to be angry with the situation, angry with people uh, around you. Um, and also it's easy to be quick to speak to quick to give comments you Mm. you see this a lot in our day and age Mm. uh, where people get really angry about situations Mm. um, and they're very quickly to uh, to give the voice 
but not as quick to actually listen mm. to what somebody else is saying. So this is so, very relevant so, to yeah, today. Same thing, it's, only, it's the same thing then as it, it is now. Mm. Uh, so I think it's interesting because the... I'm not looking at the Greek Doctor, just before you continue, I want you to just talk a little closer to the mic Certainly, so that yes. we can actually, because I, I don't want anybody to miss the wisdom of what you're going to say here. <laughs> yeah. uh, going into the, the Greek words, interesting word there, word there, because the word for quick is tacky, mm. and the word for slow is braddy. Mm. And of course, we adopt that word into medical terminology, mm. tachycardia, tachycardia bradycardia. brachycardia. I mean, they are Greek words. Yeah. You know, somebody in Greek, they run a race and their heart's beating. Mm. They, they will actually could say tachycardia, yeah, yeah. fast heart. Um, but in the sense, uh, that analogy, maybe, maybe, you know, you're kind of thinking fast and slow. Mm. What he's wanting there is similarly to be slow to say things. Now, it's not, mm. like, it's not, not saying don't say anything, mm. but just think before yeah. you say. Yeah. Right. The old, I don't know who coined this phrase, but before engaging mouth mm. makes your brain is in gear. Yeah. Mm. But it's uh, even with electric cars, and I there must be another analogy for that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I'm sure you can, we can take it that, in other words, before you say something, mm. listen to what mm. other people are saying. So good. Because otherwise, there could, there could be nonsense mm. that comes out. He alludes to anger in verse 20 there, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God requires. Implication being that the reason why you are quick to speak mm. and um, quick to become angry is because there's an issue of anger in mm. your heart, in your life. Now, is that anger because of the trials? Because there's obviously a context here that is to do with trials, persecution, mm. uh, attempts to deceive, etc., etc., etc. What do you think the anger issue is amongst James's readers? Because that that would give us insight into why James is written like this. I think anything where situations are out of control, mm. out of your control, which they certainly were there. There was whether it's famine, whether it's persecution, other trials, mm. they were happening. And it happens today where mm. things are happening, you're out of your control that mm. you don't want. Uh, and I think that situation can create anger. Mm. But I think what James is saying, that is not a good response. That is mm. not going to solve any problems. Mm. Um, rather than focusing on a world that's out of control, so mm. seemingly, rather concentrate on God who mm. is in control mm. and who's never lost so control. Good. So it's again, it's a kind of focus. But yeah, I think that's um, with those situations, people can quite rightly have a point, you know, if they haven't got f enough food to eat, mm. that is not a good situation. That is something that can be challenged. There's nothing mm. wrong with that. But mm. to lead to anger mm. is not going to solve the problem. I think this has got tremendous relevance uh, to today because we're living at a time when there's a lot of anger out there, mm. a lot of human anger. People are angry about the climate. People are human anger, humanly angry about injustice. Mm. Uh, people are angry about all kinds of issues. Mm. But this verse 20, and again, this is just quoting the word. Mm. This is a real challenge. Yeah. Um, because because whilst, whilst there may be just cause in there being human anger, there is an implicit danger, which mm -hmm. is that human anger leads to self-righteousness. Yeah. Mm. Surely that is um, what he means by human anger does not produce the righteousness that mm. God requires. Mm. I find that, I think that's why the world's so divided at the moment, because everybody's right. Mm. Yeah. 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 Everybody's right. Mm. If you're on the right, you're right. If you're on the left, you're right. Not in the political sense, but in the moral <laughs> sense. Mm. And you're particularly mm. morally right if you're mm. on the left. Mm. And actually, you know, and I'm not, I'm, this is not a comment on any of that, but um, actually this verse is, an, is imploring God's people mm. yeah. um, to be so careful mm. of an anger that makes you self-righteous, mm. a holier-than-thou mm. anger. Mm. Mm. So good. That almost is a pride thing. I don't do that, but mm. I'm angry at those who do do that. Mm. Because it negates, well, well, what about all the things that you do do mm. that are wrong? Mm. Are you as angry about them as everybody else? Wow. And it's, it, wow. it, it could go on and on and on. 
So this idea of a human anger does not produce the righteousness that God requires. The mm. idea of the righteousness of God is a very different from self-righteousness mm. because this is a, a, a righteousness that is given to us imputed yeah, yeah. to yeah. us the theological yeah. language would be that causes us to live in his grace mm. to see things from his kingdom perspective i find that very helpful any comment on that yeah i mean i think that this comes back to that language of kingdom again mm. because you know what is god's ultimate goal here does god care about our struggles absolutely you know are there you know understandable reasons that could you know arouse a sense of anger inside of us you know yeah that's true but then what is God's goal is for us to be kingdom carriers. Mm -hmm. And so what does it look like to respond to these situations we're presented with in a kingdom carrying way? Mm -hmm. And I think that that is the real challenge that James is getting. It kind of shows a little bit as to, you know, this is really God's priority for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so good. And, and that's the perspective that ultimately God wants us to have, isn't right. it? Is the perspective of his, uh, his kingdom. Um, James uh, encourages his listeners, again, we've talked about this, to be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Um, any connection to his previous comments on wisdom, again, this is very mm. much the way James is right. Mm. So he starts the chapter by mm. imploring the believers to be wise. Do yeah. you think that there's some kind of a connection there, perhaps, mm. between being slow to speak, slow to anger, quick to listen? Yeah. Surely that's a, a definition of wisdom, don't you think? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think if you're giving in to anger, that could be a, an indication that maybe your self-control is, is not where God wants it to be. Mm. And if your self-control is not where God wants it to be, it's difficult to then be wise in s difficult situations. Mm. Suddenly you're uh, in a situation where you know, things are more difficult, maybe financial situations. Mm. And suddenly, if you if you're giving into anger, maybe then your your self control is not there, and mm. so your wisdom isn't going to be there. Mm. And so I think, um, in a sense, anger could be the, the antithesis of wisdom in a sense, because or human anger at least as as it um, uh, states here. And I think it can be sort of um, yeah, if you're giving into anger, it's very very difficult to then be making wise decisions at the at the same time. And your words have real power, mm. and it's really important to make sure that you're choosing those words very wisely, mm. especially in scenarios where things aren't going your way and things are difficult for you at that moment. This is intensely challenging, isn't it? Because it's very easy for us to sit here in this yeah. room tonight. I'm, I'm not angry at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. When I get on the car yeah. you know, and I see a driver who's driving in a manner that displeases me, that's that's a different thing altogether. Is it ever right to, or let's, let me ask the question, how do we then, because the subject is anger here mm, yeah. and anger is a massive subject in our world at the moment james's implication is um that human anger it doesn't accomplish anything that's mm, essentially yeah. what james yeah. is saying human mm. anger it certainly doesn't accomplish in you what god wants to accomplish it right. certainly doesn't yeah. right. it certainly doesn't um produce the righteousness that god wants mm. uh, that the right living that god wants within you and yet there are times when we are angry yeah. mm. we get angry about stuff What's the, this is the tension that we need to manage. How do we deal with this? And is there, a, is there a, a, a biblical way that we can handle our anger? Because it's one thing to just say, you shouldn't be angry. Right. And yeah. that's easy to say that. But, you know, we get angry. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, um, yeah. like you were saying, um, just, I guess, for me, a, a, a practical, like, sort of a suggestion of what to do when you're angry is, I guess, submit that, like, Try to understand why you're angry, and then submit that anger to God. I guess mm -hmm. uh, submit just there. Yeah, just ask God, God for wisdom. I guess over the how how not to because when you're angry, right? You you you're, you just do certain things that you normally wouldn't do. Probably yeah. um, you're not really thinking about the the actions and the sort of things you're actually doing. But when you submit it to God, you know, like God will bring you some sort of peace. You know, you you you'll you'll be able to uh, like uh, whoever you'll be able to. Try and like help you understand why you're angry. I guess it makes you sort of sort of start to really quickly like think about certain things you're doing, um, and it, 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 it's just really about submitting that to God and make like asking Him to mm. you know to help deal with that anger. I guess. Yes, mm. and I think that I mean from my perspective, certainly from my, in my own re reflections, it, it would seem to me that the anger here would have to be related to the trials. Yeah. 
and the persecution and we talk about a famine there's trials of many kinds yeah. james yeah. says earlier so almost a sense of anger at injustice mm, anger yeah. at unfairness mm. anger <laughs> at why are we being treated like this yeah. and perhaps perhaps even a sense of anger with god mm, god why are you yeah. letting this happen mm. james's message is persevere Christians pray, Lord, I don't want to persevere. I want you to get me out of here. James mm. says, persevere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, consider joy. Consider pure joy when you go through trials of many kinds. Mm. God, I, I, I'm not enjoying myself. Yeah. I'm angry at you. Yeah. James is, is really challenging everything here, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this is this is very, very powerful. Anything to add to that, Dr. John? Yeah, uh, I think Paul sums it up where he's saying, uh, he's writing that, your anger if you're angry don't lead lead to sin, to sin yes. mm. so yeah. in a sense mm. anger in itself is not necessarily sin right yeah. um but it can lead to sin um and then he gives very good advice but it shouldn't last beyond the day no. don't let the sun don't set. let the yeah. sun go down on yeah. your wrath yeah. because mm. it's then it'll fester you know if you wake up the next day and you've got that same yeah. anger. See, what he's saying is sort things out mm. quickly it's yes. good. Uh, but it's right to, to challenge injustice uh, and jesus did that yes. uh, and many people throughout the bible did mm. that mm. um but um using um anger is not going to bring about mm. uh, what God wants. Yes. Mm. Um, there's just one verse in Proverbs, which I think really kind of gives some insight on this. Mm. Proverbs is 29 verse 11. Mm. It says, fools give full vent to their rage, mm. but the wise bring calm in the end. Oh, so uh, it's, again, it's a, Jesus said, blessed be the peacemakers. Yes. Yeah. This is, again, if you contextualize this to the 21st century, this, this idea of being slow to speak and slow to angry anger and quick to listen this is particularly challenging now, again with social media because mm. um, in social media you can you have an audience of hundreds of people on your facebook yeah an audience on your twitter an audience on your TikTok, an audience on your instagram mm. you can say what you want what's the facebook i don't know if it still still says it because i don't go on the facebook that much but it says what's on your mind to which I was think none of your business, Mr. <laughs> uh, nothing that I would ever want to share with you anyway. Mm. Um, but this is uh, particularly poignant, this challenge yeah. of being slow to speak. Yeah. So maybe there's a, a challenge, you know, people who go on their social media, and I see it all the time, and I'm, mm. I'm personally saddened when I see Christians yeah. going on social media and venting their human anger regularly with mm. no solutions. They mm. do nothing. They are not contributing. They're, it's just just anger, mm. and it doesn't instill confidence. Mm. It's just like it's like uh, it's like the two old uh, fellas and the Muppets. This has got to be of a certain age. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the critics. They're just sitting there, the theater critics, <laughs> journal, <laughs> contributing nothing and, and mm. angry. And I think that's a particular challenge. Maybe there's a, a an, an implication. For us in the 21st century, be slow to tweet. Oh, mm. uh, be slow to face. Don't Come Facebook on. your problems. Just face them. Hey. Nice. Uh, you know. Anyway, I'm contextualizing this to the 21st century. Let's let's talk about verse 21, and we've only got two or three minutes to do this, but I think it's really interesting. Therefore, having said all of these things, brothers and sisters, about not getting angry and so on, mm. therefore get rid of all moral filth. Mm. And the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, mm. which can save you. Jonah, explain that. Yeah, I think uh, in this verse, we see a bit of a, a, a point to the war inside of us that wages co constantly between, you know, those that moral filth that he talks what about. What is I moral suppose. filth? What is that? Well, I suppose, you know, he's just spoken about anger i suppose mm. that's going to be one of them mm. the other sinful desires of our flesh lust we're talking about things so like lust and greed and selfishness and all these types of yeah. things um and it's interesting that he then says to humbly accept the word planted in you you know one of the uh, parables that jesus talked about was the seed of the uh, the parable of the sower yeah. who mm. sowed the seeds and um, Jesus explains in verse 19 of Matthew 13 that the seed that that refers to is the message about the kingdom and so you know when we're talking about you know humbly accepting that word planted in us it's about humbly accepting okay Jesus is my king 
I'm going to take a road of humility here. I might have a, a reason that I could justify to be angry and express that anger, but I'm going to take a humble road of obedience to my king. And I think that that is a, a little touch of what he's hitting on that. And of course, to allude to previous verses, which you can re- you can obviously watch or listen to previous episodes of this uh, this uh, podcast. But the the word that the word planted in you, that's the word of truth mm. that he's referred to uh, in previous verses. Mm. That's the word of truth that can stop us being deceived. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and here he's saying, and actually it's that word of truth which can save you. This, yeah. is, this is to do with the, the process of salvation. Yeah. Soteria, I have been saved. I am being saved. I will be saved. Mm. It is a work of God in our mm. own yeah. lives. Dr. John, any comments on verse 21? Uh, just to quote with a verse um, from Deuteronomy, this is Deuteronomy 30, verse 14. Um, Moses is telling God's people, and he's saying, The word is very near you, it is in your mouth and in your heart, so that you may obey it. And I think the message there is that God's word, like with the saying um, about the, uh, the parable of the sower, that unless if it's accepted and it goes into your heart and actually acts on it, mm then that is what's going to save you. It's not just listening to it. Mm. It's uh, actually taking it on board yes. uh, and going from heart uh, head knowledge to, to actually into the heart. Mm. And again, James, is as clear as clear can be, get rid of all moral filth. Mm. Uh, in other words, he's saying, don't let it have any influence mm. in your life. Mm. Uh, be careful what you see. Be careful what you hear. Be careful mm. what you are feeding on. Yeah. Uh, be, just get rid of it get yeah. it out of your life yeah. Yeah. don't have anything to do with it don't yeah. let it get anywhere near you yeah. He's, mm. there's a sense of ruthlessness mm. in here mm. and the evil that is so prevalent and then he says and humbly so that's the secret he's mm. giving us a very powerful secret mm. to accepting God's word which is that it must be accepted with humility yeah. mm. even when you don't understand what you're mm. going through yeah. mm. even when you're angry at God yeah. for what you don't understand James mm. is saying but still I want you to humble yourself yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. in the so midst good. of your lack of understanding mm. and accept the word because that's the word that can save you yeah. that's the word that is yeah. the birth of your salvation you didn't yeah. save yourself you you were saved because the word of God mm. was planted in you by grace. Mm. You're saved through faith, not mm. yourself. It is the it is the gift of God. Mm. These these are wonderful verses. That's James chapter one verses nineteen to twenty one. I've really enjoyed this mm. uh, session today. Thanks so much for joining us. <laughs>